my name is Lonnie Halstead, uh, and I will be transferring to UC Santa Cruz in the fall, like, so, like Marisa said. So during the summer, I was at the Hornada Lab in the Stanford University Material Science and Engineering Department, where during the summer, I studied modeling intralayer interactions for TMD atomically thin materials. So TMD materials are being used in emerging technologies like sodium batteries, solar cells, et cetera, because of their unique optical and electro electrical properties. So many of these properties are interesting when the layers are stacked together. However, understanding these structures becomes more complicated. So the current models of layer interactions are not tractable because of their very high computational cost. So a new way to study these materials and structures would be to use machine learning to predict the atomic position and the energies and forces associated with it. So for the overall project goal, it was to create a process for making a model predicting the intralayer and interlayer interactions for layered van der Waals materials. And so my focus during the summer was on creating the ML model for the intralayer interactions of MOS2 shown by the stars, um, such that if we give it an atomic position close to equilibrium, we can predict the total energy and forces. So right now, there are about three classes of models which have their pros and cons. So first we have densital functional, density functional theory, which has a high accuracy but lower computational speed, followed by Stillinger-Weber, which has a higher speed but lower accuracy. And then there is machine learning. So this is something that we base off of DFT. So we hope to have a similar accuracy, but higher speed. And so for machine learning, we can define it as a function with an input X that outputs Y. So in this case, our input would be our atomic position and our out output would be our energy and forces. So for a neural network, we have parameters and hyperparameters. So hyperparameters are things that we can tune explicitly for a more accurate model. And that's something we'll get into later on. So my materials for this project was quantum espresso, which I used to create my data set using DFT calculations, followed by the NEquip extension Allegro. So this is what I use to set my model parameters and then do the train, test, and deploy steps for my model. And then for lamps, this is where I did my true test. So I compared the model output for the properties and dynamics of my material. So here was a process that we created for creating the ML model. So first, when we create our data set, we wanna ask, what do we wanna base our model on? And then after we have our data set, we can move on to training our model, where we ask what parameters are gonna create the best model. So what can we change to create a more accurate model? And then finally, we want to test our model to see how well the model fits the data set. And then after making sure that it runs, we want to do a true test to see how generalizable our model is. So in creating a data set, here is the little introduction to MOS2. So for an MOS2, it has two stable phases, so a 2-each phase and a 1-t phase. And for our data set, we are focusing on the near equilibrium 2-h phase, shown by the red star. So for our model, we didn't want to blow up the model. We just wanted to capture the type of shifts that would happen when we stack layers on top of each other. So in hyperparameter tuning, these are two different hyperparameters that we paid attention to. So first on the left, we have the Allegra layers. So this correlates to the interaction complexity. So one layer would be two atomic interactions, two layers would be three atoms interacting, and so on. So Overall, we saw a low um, root mean squared error for all of these, but a low number of layers was not very accurate because it lacked complexity of interaction. And then for max radius, this is the maximum radius of interaction within the supercell. So if there's a higher radius, we would see more neighbor interaction. And similarly to Allegra layers, there was a relatively low RMSE for all of them. So overall, when we compare all the hyperparameter sets, um, we found that there were low errors for both the training and the validation sets. So training and validation is where we split our data set into what we train it on and then what we validate it on. So we found that with a good default, there was no need to spend extra time tuning for a similar result. So in our true test, we wanted to see how well the model captures the 2-each phase 
which we based our model on. So in comparing the phonon dispersion of Stillinger Weber with DFT, shown in the red and green, and then my model with the DFT, which is the blue and green. So we see that on the right, my has an RMSE of 0 0.03, and then Stillinger Weber has an RMSE of 0 0.13. So this shows that the model is similar to the DFT in predicting the 2H phase, but has a higher accuracy than Stillinger Weber, which was what we wanted initially. So we wanted to see how far we can push our model if we can test it beyond the scope of our data set. And though we didn't expect it, we still wanted to try. So on the left, if you look at the red block for MLS2, we should see about a 0.8 to 0.6 um, energy difference for the phase transition. Um, so for two units, we should expect to see about 1.5. However, with our model, we got an 8.24, which shows that definitely did not capture the 1T phase. So for conclusion, we know that our data set must account for the specific application, or if we want to do a more general application, create a more general data set. And that hyperparameter tuning did not have a strong effect on model accuracy, but a good default is what's most important. So the next steps would be to create a workflow so that we can create a data set and a model for any material in any phase, and then to combine the intralayer and interlayer models. So for reflections, um, definitely don't be afraid to ask questions. And something I found was through creating that process that machine learning is a general process that can be applied to many different applications. And also always take notes on your process. I'd like to say thank you to the following people, to my mentors, Felipe Jornada, Jonathan Giogara, and the Twisted ML Group for their support, as well as from SLI and Foothill, Marisa Yanez and Sofia Kim for their encouragement and Jeff Anderson for the recommendation to the program, as well as the following organizations for funding. Thank you.